in a world where tasting boxes exist. You compare the three whiskeys in the video. Let's do this. Welcome to Whiskey Riffs. I'm Kevin, and today we have a bit of a different video for you. In this episode, I have a Flavier tasting box, which I get uh, once a quarter from Flavier, and I've bought a couple individually too. But what they are is three different bottles, and you get to taste the whiskey, and you don't have to buy full-size bottles just to do that. Now, before I get into the tasting, I wanna break down what's actually in the kit. This video is not sponsored by Flavier, I just happen to love their tasting boxes and their whiskey selection and sometimes the rare whiskeys that I can get from that service. So if you're interested in Flavor, uh, there's no sponsorship here, but there is a link in my description that will give you uh, a membership and it also gives me a bottle and you a bottle free for when you sign up using that link. So it helps my channel and you know you may as well get something free out of it too and i appreciate it you know and giving whiskey is good karma right all right so into the tasting box here which is actually a cylinder it's not square box it's round box on the top you'll see there's a little tab here and this tab says the kiloman whiskey flight so the three whiskeys today are all from kiloman that's not always the case sometimes tasting boxes have multiple whiskeys from multiple regions Sometimes they're just multiple types of scotch or multiple types of bourbon. You know, they're all different and they're designed to kind of give you a way to sample. So this time we're gonna be sampling Kiloman and I'll talk a little bit about that distillery in a bit. If you grab this name tab, it also pops up the top. Let me do it on the table so I don't make a mess and pop this all over the place. Oh, see that's what I was afraid of doing. All right, when you pull this up, you get a Flavier coaster, which is a ceramic, bad boy and underneath that coaster are the cards that you get for tasting now the first three cards are a b and c cards they give you the name of the whiskey and uh, abv on it and then after you get through those cards you actually have information cards that give you more details about the whiskey and these have stickers on them so that you can label the bottles later and actually have the name on them instead of just A, B, and C. On the A, B, and C cards that, you, that I showed you originally, there's also a nice little feature where you get the uh, flavor spiral on the back from Flavier, where they kind of give you the broad strokes of flavor notes that are in there with little images. And if we break into the box itself, you'll see that we have three whiskeys. And these three whiskeys are labeled A, B, and C and they're nestled nicely in foam so they don't get broken uh, during shipment. And on the actual bottles themselves, which I'll go ahead and take out, they simply state the country of origin. This is, these are all product of Scotland because they're all the same Kiloman distillery. And they'll show the ABV on them. What we do need are some glasses. All righty. So we have whiskey, we have glasses, and we're in good shape. But one more point before I get started with this, Flavier is allowing you to pre-order their whiskey advent calendars. And that time period is usually pretty small. So this is July, end of July. Where are we? What day is it? End of July, good Lord. End of July, 2021. Uh, they may not last very long. And they're also at a discount right now. So you get 20% off the uh, whiskey advent calendar and the whiskey advent calendar is uh, 24 bottles like this one for each day and they arrive before December so you get them in time to do the the daily advent of popping open a whiskey and tasting it for that day and last year I did a video one for each day one for each bottle and then I did a follow-up video that was for every single bottle trying to pick my five favorites which may or may not have come out really well. Um, it was a lot of whiskey and one tasting. I'm planning on doing it again this year. So if you want to get an advent calendar and play along with Kevin as he drinks too much whiskey during December, I'd love to have you along for the ride. The same link that gets you the flavor membership will also give you information about the advent calendar if you're interested. Uh, if you wait till later, can't guarantee be around, they'll be around. Uh, last year they weren't 
And so everybody was asking me, hey, where can I get this advent calendar? I said, they're kind of out of stock. Lastly, if you have any questions about Flavier or anything that I've experienced with this service, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions you have in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at Kevin Hochter. All right, let's go ahead and start pouring these. And they're set up as blind tastings. Um, certainly not necessary, but can be fun if you want to try to discover the flavors without getting influenced by the names or more information about the whiskeys. Now these are 50 milliliter, oh my goodness, I spilled. These are 50 milliliter bottles. Uh, I like to pour half in and save half. And that is a trick if you ever spill whiskey. You can rub it in your hands and get some different tasting notes. The heat actually activates some of the smells, the taste, the flavors, aromas. What are they called? They're called aromas, right? Hmm. Very nice. As I was saying, without, as I was spilling, uh, I do half pours for these, half the bottle, because as we've talked about before, when you taste whiskey, the flavors and the, uh, the nose, and nose smells, and the smells that you get out of the whiskey, your, your nosing and your tasting and the, and the finish, everything else is highly affected by your environment and what you've eaten recently or drank. So it's nice to actually have uh, a bit of whiskey now and then later. Okay, we've got our whiskeys poured. If you've never heard of Kiloman, they are uh, a nice, small, independent distillery on Isla. And when Judy and I were there in June of 2018, uh, the tour was exceptional. Uh, the person knew what she was talking about. The whole distillery felt like it was a passion project where there was a real desire to create a unique Isla whiskey. They call it a farm to bottle distillery because they actually grow the barley on Isla that's used in the whiskey. They distill it there, they mature it on Isla, and it is bottled there also, which I was really interested in watching the bottling process. You don't see that at too many distilleries because sometimes they're in such high volume that they have to outsource that. They take the cast, send them somewhere else, and they do all the high volume bottling. But as you can see in this video, they're actually doing it by hand. You can see the the labels going on, the caps going on, and uh, you know we got to stand there and watch. That was the whole feeling of that tour. It felt like we were getting to experience every part of the whiskey making process, and I just loved the experience there. If you do get a chance to get over to Isla, I would highly recommend stopping at Kiloman and doing their whiskey tour. All right, let's start with. Ooh, I've made my card wet. It's sticking to the bottom of the glass. I don't know what that language, that, that accent is. I have no idea why I'm doing it still. Let me stop that. So the first Kiloman is a 46% ABV scotch. It has a lot of malted note on the nose. I'm getting some grassy notes, a little bit of spice, tiny bit of citrus in there too. It's a little bit of sweetness coming out in the nose now. There's a lot of oak spice right away on the taste. Um, more heat than I would have expected from 46 ABV. Definitely a lot of the Earth, earthen notes, grassy notes. It wasn't too smoky or peated on the nose, but that heat that I got right away, that is the smoke and peat. Definitely an Isla whiskey, uh, with the peated style Isla whiskey, the, the more traditional whiskey you hear about in Isla, not all of them are peated. Having trouble placing the sweet notes. I'm getting darker fruits. That oak spice is really kind of dominating my taste buds for this. Let me go ahead and flip the card over and see what the tasting spiral shows. Smoky, um, sherry, white chocolate, butterscotch, lemon peel, black pepper, strawberries. I'm not getting strawberries. You don't have to get the notes that they get. You don't have to get the notes that someone sitting right next to you gets. Tasting notes are very personal. They say black pepper for the spice. That would, that would make sense. I, I can feel that as I'm, as I'm tasting it. A nice nose, but not something that's going to bowl you over with smoke and peat. So not one of the Lafroy level or even Ardbeg level. I think it's, I think it's tamer than Ardbeg. Let's go on to number, number B. How about letter B? Let's go on to B. And this is also a 46% ABV. Uh, the first one, I don't know if I said it or not, is Makir Bay. And B is Sanag. I'm probably saying wrong. Color is so much difference on B. So much difference. Color is so much different on B. 
Speak English, I can. Mm -hmm. To me, this one is a tamer nose. A little sweeter nose. Getting um, sweetness that you get from rum. And although I've been to uh, Kiloman and I've had their whiskeys before, it's been a while since I've owned a, a full bottle of it. So my brain certainly can't recall all the details. This is a pretty much a fresh tasting. It's much milder on the taste. There is that peated note. It tastes more like a, more like an ashen uh, taste. I wasn't getting that on the Mocker Bay. Really having a problem hunting the, the nose notes. Nose notes. Nose notes. Nose notes. It's very spicy. Maybe a little pepper, but it seems like a different spice on this one. More like peppers as opposed to pepper. Sweetness is like a dessert wine. It tastes a little like a, uh, like a port finish. Where you've got the um, plums or the darker fruits, maybe even... Uh, Raisins. Flip the card, see what we got here for their tasting notes. Okay, they got smoke, of course, uh, peaty, yeah. raisins, dried fruit, white pepper, vanilla, and pineapple. I'm not tasting pineapple. I'm definitely getting the dried fruit, the raisins. I'm not a big fan of white chocolate. Uh, I prefer dark chocolate. Good lord, speaking is hard. I don't usually have white chocolate because I think it's too sweet. I prefer dark chocolate. So the the, the less sweet notes in this are pointing me towards dark chocolate. They say white chocolate. Different notes than I'm getting. Let's go on to C, see what we got here. This is the U.S. Small Batch Limited Edition. See, now that nose, it's more like tire rubber. Walking into a tire store. A little citrus there. Sweetness is being squashed by that, uh, by that tire smell for me. It's down in there. There's a little vanilla, but it's being cratered. This might be the spiciest of the three. Oh, it's 48.5% ABV, which is going to give it a little more kick. Bump up the, the peat and the smoke with some extra layers of alcohol burn. Very spicy, very peppery. None of these have a really long, long finish. They're all about medium finish. And the residual is a lot of peat and oak spice. For me, a little bit of pepper. See what they say in the back of this bad boy. Peaty. Tobacco. Interesting. What they say is tobacco, I'm getting tire rubber. I think that's the same correlation of notes. You have marmalade. Oak spice is strong for me. Toffee, citrus. I got a little citrus. Port. So I guess that one is their port finish. I'll look up some of the uh, the more, more of the details on these and, and put some notes on the screen or in the description for you. So what do I like? Out of these three, if I were to pick a whiskey, which one would I go to? Well, out of these three, I think my favorite is actually Mocker Bay. I normally uh, go towards the dried fruit flavors, raisins, things like that. People give me a hard time for liking raisins. There's nothing wrong with liking raisins. Raisins are a good fruit. They're nature's candy. My wife would say bacon is nature's candy, but raisins are nature's candy. All right, well, that was a fun tasting. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like on this video. I am going to see about ordering a bottle of Mocker Bay, since that was my favorite out of these three, which is the advantage of tasting boxes. You get to try before you buy a big, maybe expensive bottle of whiskey. And uh, when you do try them, try to use my trick of half a bottle in one tasting, wait a while, a couple days or something, try it at a different time of day with a different environment, and see if you still uh, feel the same about that whiskey. And if you uh, enjoyed this tasting box or this idea of a tasting box, again, check out my link in the description below. It gives you a free bottle, gives me a free bottle, and allows you to join Flavier, which gives you uh, a free tasting box every quarter and a free full bottle of whiskey every quarter. Plus they have a lot of whiskeys that I can't, or not just whiskey, they actually have rums and, and I just bought a bottle of the Botanist, which is a Brook Lottie, uh gin that I've been wanting to try. So you can get all kinds of spirits from Flavier. I tend to focus on the whiskey side for obvious reasons. This is called whiskey riffs, not liquor with liquor whiffs. Riffs? Liquor riffs. It's not called liquor riffs because that's really hard to say. <laughs> it's called whiskey riffs. Um, <laughs> again, if you like this video, I don't know why. Um, but go ahead and click the like button. Uh, give me a subscribe if you, if you would. Uh, if you want to come back to see more of this kind of tomfoolery. 
And if you're enjoying these kind of uh, tasting box videos, let me know in the comments and I'll certainly do more of them. I have several tasting boxes that I haven't really done on camera yet. And until the next video, take care of the ones around you, take care of yourself and cheers.